Hello, my name's Tom and I was going to make another video um, to follow up my cool things to do in Reaper video where I just showed off a variety of different tricks and production techniques. But then um, competition, competition came up um, to do soundtrack for a movie trailer, a horror movie trailer. So I thought that might be something where I could kill two birds with one stone and I could try out a few different tricks on that and um, see what I came up with. Um, so after I downloaded the um, video and the samples, which is a company's samples you have to use, I'll, I'll put a link in the description so you can download them yourself. Then I'm using Reaper. So what I need to do is import the video. So you can create a track here, which I just brought in the Halloween challenge video here. So you go to insert media file, pick it up in the media file. And then before you can actually watch the video, what you need to remember to do is go to tick the video box and then it will show up in a box like this so you can play it. And then um, I wanted to pick up the samples as well and open them up and check through those. So what you can do with that is you go to um, Media Explorer and then you can see I've got them down here. So um, you can just click on them on here and you can also modify them, change pitch, change rate. Um, you can change the tempo. I'd so First of all, I just started by playing through the video, having a look at that, and then just clicking on some of the samples and seeing what there was. So you can just click on them in there and it'll run, run them. So I had a look through those, saw the ones I liked best. The only one I changed before I used it was I used on this one here. Before I copied it in, I thought this is too high. So what I did is I reduced the pitch. Okay, so then what I did I'll just hide this now, I think. So you can see what's going on here. Is um, I, I wrote, I played through the video and I wrote down when I thought it should basically build up, when it should start, what were the atmospheric bits. And then I played through the samples and wrote down which bits might match and then started moving them about and trying to fit them in with the timeline of the video. Um, you want to get them to fit in to match exactly where you want. It can be a good idea just to take the um, snap enabled off just so you can move them around exactly. And I noticed that some bits of the video are some very rapid fire cuts, rapid fire. So I thought, well, there would be some good places I can maybe do some judgery stuff like here. So in my cool things to do in Reaper video, I did a bit of that. So what you have to do if you want to chop it up and do the judging thing is you go to options, you go to snap grid, snap grid settings here, and then I've changed it to 132 instead of the standard one four. And then you can just um, highlight bits and chop them out. But then what I did differently with this one is I started to use some other filtering effects. So on here, I use sweeping resonance one here. So it adds that in when it's chopping it up. And then also on this bit, I used, um, this is one of the um, Jesus Sonic effects I made in my the last video I did on how to make a JSFX plugin. So I used this on this. So this is like, um, it's sort of like the um, Yamaha SBX90 um, symphonic presets as used by, um, say, Zach Wild and uh, Nirvana and stuff. So I used that just to give it a little bit of extra and then carried it on. 
And then on the other bit, I didn't get going at the same time. What I did was I just raised the filter. So I used a different JS filter effect. And then I just boosted it on here. So I'll, I'll pay you these two separate bits separately just so you hear them. I'll just play a little bit so you can hear. I'll just solo it. Just got a bit of juddering on that one. And then you've got a bit more dramatic one on here. So yeah, it works quite well. So I'll just play the beginning of the track here. So I'll show it so, so you'll chop off the top of the video because I can't fit it on. Actually, I'll move it up a bit, get a bit more in. I'll just play it from the beginning and then just stop it. Okay, so then I did a similar thing. Some other drudgery bits going on. A bit more here, but I didn't do the filter then, so I just broke it up a bit there. And then um, what I thought I wanted to do is I wanted to try and um, keep similar sound throughout, but keep it quite atmospheric. So what I used was I used for Eventide Black Hole on several of the percussion and drum tracks and also on the scream, some scream bits. But I, try, I used some different ones on it. So the main one I used is biggest reverb ever. Just I used for straight preset, just for a really big atmospheric sound that goes on for a long time. But then on um, this one here, yeah, I used um, Neutrino, which is a quite different sound. So I'll, I'll, I'll just I'll play um, a little bit without it and then with just so you hear the difference. So I'll just turn off the effects and solo it. OK, so I turn it on and do it again. hear that ringing on even going on from there so that's another another thing I tried to do so to try and keep it cohesive I use the same type of reverb but different types so that they sort of fit together um, um, also I wanted to sort of build up at the beginning bit so I'll just show you here So on here, you can see I just used a fader from a corner. You just clicked on a corner and build it. So I didn't want to go. It looked, sounded better when it built up after this. So I just faded it rather than actually doing automation. I didn't need to do that. I just faded it in from the beginning. So it just gradually builds up on the drums here. And then it, it builds up to more of a climax with the big drums. And then at the end, as it, the video fades out, you hear just the, the black hole longest reverb ever just going on in the background so it sounds quite dramatic and atmospheric um so another thing i wanted to try doing which is a bit more fiddly is i wanted to do um just find where it is is I wanted to try and do a reversed section and building up to the main bits where the drums come in just to get a bit of extra feel. So what I did with that was first of all, I just duplicated this. So you've got these, these bits here as the main drums coming in. I'll, I'll just play a bit quickly of that. So, so I did a copy of that and then what I did was I put um, biggest reverb ever on it. In fact, I don't really need this on here because, because I actually printed to it. So I'll just move that. And then from the copy, I put the biggest reverb ever on it. So it had a bit long reverb trail. And then um, I clicked on 
that and then you can just do um, render. So I rendered the item as a new take. And then after I'd done that, what I did was I just cop clicked on it and I did reverse. So you do reverse item as new take. And then I just did it so that it fitted in so that it fitted in with here. So I'll just play. I'll just do this on solo to start with and then I'll show the whole thing. So now if I do the whole thing, okay, so that's one thing I tried. The other thing after that I went in and did, you'll notice that some of these down below, what I've done is I've panned them as well. So another thing just to give a bit more space to it is when you had single hits or single items, I've panned them 70% to the left and the right, or or six, or about 60 and 60 to some of them when you've got hits or noises, just to give him more space and a bit more cinematic feel. And then also what I did was on, on the actual master track, is an, I used another free Imager. So this is an ozone one, which is I downloaded for free. And then I just put the width up to 100%. So that kind of exaggerates the spatial characters. And it sounds very um, cinematic. I haven't got surround sound or anything like that. So I can't do that. But it kind of simulates something a bit like that. So I wouldn't use it for normal music. It'd just be over the top and a bit ridiculous unless it was some novelty section in the middle or something but for something like a trailer which is supposed a horror movie trailer it's supposed to be over the top and ridiculous so i could do so yeah that seemed to work quite well and it was also a bit very loud by then as well so on the limiter i did bring the overall volume down so i suppose another thing to bear in mind is i knew this was only going to be used on youtube and everything gets compressed down to minus 14 so it, it is way above that already but it's nothing like as loud as it was because if you compress it too much it just ruins it even more so it's 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 usually better to get it closer to minus 14 if it's just going to be on youtube um and then um after i'd done all that and played it through just go to render and i rendered it as um rendered it the what I the best way to do it because I wanted to have a bit of a space for the YouTube video and a bit of space at the end and not just go straight into it is I did it as a a, a WAV file and then I and then I went into another video editor and I added it in. But what you can do as well is you can just export it as video. If you so but it can struggle a bit on a normal computer. Even if you've got a fairly decent computer, when you start doing video and lots of signals, it can start to struggle a bit. So that's something to be aware of. So if you do want to change it to just go straight to video, then the one to do is you choose the video top one there, and then watch, and then the one which you want for YouTube would be the MOV or MP4, so you would select that. Um, but I just did it as well far, which sounds better. Well, it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to end up sounding the same anyway, but it gave me a bit of control over the beginning so I could fade it in and then I could fade out at the end and then um, not just go straight into the trailer. So um, that's pretty much all I've done. Um, I've only ever done one sort of attempted music soundtrack before. I've never tried doing a trailer thing. Um, I think it came out quite well so what i'll do is i'll put a link at, um in the description to the actual trailer itself which is only about 37 seconds in long or something so um yeah check that out and see what you think and i'll also put a description I'll, I'll put the information if you want to enter the competition i think it, it it's only ends in about like a week and a half from the date i'm doing this so if you're watching this um after, after October 
2021, it will be too late anyway. But these sorts of competitions come up quite often. So you can um, try and do something similar yourself. So thanks for watching and uh, check out the trailer.